one topic that comes up all the time, and I'm going to try to do it in one cut. We'll see. By the way, I'm on the Tappan Zee Bridge. I know they call it the Mario Cuomo Bridge, but fuck that. It's still the Tappan Zee. So I'm going to go with that. So, reverse convertibles, everyone seems to struggle with them, and they're not heavily tested, but they might be on the exam, but the vendors fucking love asking about reverse convertibles when it's barely tested. So, a reverse convertible, first of all, is really good. First of all, it could be second of all is that it's good in one way that you get a higher return, but there's higher risk, there's short term, it's a bond, okay? So let's talk about, before we talk about reverse convertibles, we need to talk about regular convertible bonds. So regular convertible bonds are bonds that you buy, bonds or preferreds that you buy that turn into common stock. And you would normally convert them into common when the value of the bond is less than the value of the common stock. So they're really good that, you know, you not only to get the income payments, you get the opportunity to turn it into common, which is really fun. But reverse convertibles are the opposite. While a regular convertible, you get to choose when you convert. The reverse convertible, the issuer chooses when you convert. And that's normally going to happen when it's worse for you. They're going to do it when it's good for them. So let's say you have a bond, a regular convertible bond, you own it. The stock is trading above the value of the bond. You're going to convert and make a profit. On a reverse convertible, it's the opposite. What happens is you own a bond and you're getting interest, which is great, short-term, high rate. And when the value of the common stock is less than the value of the bond, the issuer is likely to convert it on you and give you the stock. So let's say the bond's trading at 1000 By the way, guys, check me out on Capital Advantage Tutoring on YouTube. Great videos, awesome videos, if I say so myself. A shitload of them for the Series 7 SIE and all the Fender exams. So what's going to happen is if the value of the common is, say, 980 If you converted all your bonds into common, it's worth 980 bucks. But the bond is trading at 1000 they will convert it, okay? They will make you convert it so they can give you the lower value than giving you the higher value bond. So they would give you 980 versus 1000 in stock. So there's a risk there, and they're going to pay you for that. So reverse convertibles, again, barely tested. Higher return, they're short term, because you have higher risk, because you don't control when it's converted. Now, you can sell the thing anytime you want and get rid of it, but if it's in a bad place where you're going to lose money to convert, they might do it to you. So maybe the better choice is convertible bonds.